Anders was born with a bang. I got to the hospital and he was born 10 minutes later. He was almost born on the freeway. So we knew he was special from the beginning. He was kind of a serious child, but he had a really dry sense of humor. He was just a funny kid. When he was a sophomore, he decided that he wanted to graduate from high school early and go to high school in Japan. And he lived with a homestay family. He just loved them, and they became his second family. Kelly and Anders were amazing brother and sister. They were pals. They did everything together. It was a really special relationship. She seemed really healthy up to 15 months. All of a sudden, she got very, very sick. The doctors told us there were milestones for her kidney function, and it would be three years, five years, 12 years, and she did really, really well. But when she hit 30, her kidneys started to go downhill. She was looking for a donor, and she figured that if she was on the waiting list, she would have to wait five to seven years. Anders immediately wanted to do it. After the surgery, the doctor called me and said, you know, it went really well. He woke up the next morning very early, and he went to see Kelly. And he told her at that time that that was the best day of his life, and um, that he really loved her. A couple hours later, he was in a lot of pain. He went from being on fentanyl um, to being on Dilaudid. I let the nurse know that he was really throwing up. In the morning, the doctors came by. I did not realize that he had had another dose of medication. The nurse came in and she was fiddling with something behind him. I went over to touch his hand and his hand was really cold. And I looked at his face and took off his glasses and his face was yellow and his lips were blue and I knew he wasn't breathing. And I screamed his name and he didn't respond and I screamed at the nurse for help. He was in a coma um, for nine days. He never came out. They said that his heart just stopped. We just wanted to find out what happened. But I was greatly disappointed when I asked for the records the day after he passed away. And they said they couldn't have them ready. And I persisted. I went to speak to an attorney because I felt like this is the only way I'm ever going to know why my son passed away. It was the perfect storm. Everything wrong happened. From them not reporting that he was vomiting, to not checking in on him enough, to overdosing him. If you don't know how a patient's going to react to a drug, you should have a pulse oximeter on to make sure that you're not overdosing because you really don't know how much that patient can tolerate. We did prevail. I won't call it a win, but um, the judge ruled in our favor. I think it sent a message. It's totally on the system. I mean, we're all human. We make mistakes. I could spend my whole time blaming and that doesn't get me anywhere. It doesn't get anybody else anywhere. The system needs to be changed. If people know that they need a pulse oximeter, how many lives could be saved? And it's just making people aware that something so simple could save people's lives. Part of the reason why I'm willing to do this is for him because he needs a voice and I'm his voice.
When we found the truth, I felt that his voice had been heard. He was our hero, and with his passing, I've had so many friends of his and friends of mine say that he changed their lives. Giving his sister a gift was so amazing. She's great. Yeah, she's great. She, um, she got married last September and my son and Andre's best friend walked her down the aisle. And it was a great moment. And after the ceremony, there was a double rainbow. And a double rainbow for us is just a sign of love and someone's watching down on her. <laughs>